Hey, what's up, Ukulele family? Marco here. Welcome back to another video. Now, I know this is a different setup. There's a mic right here, which means we're gonna have a special guest today. We're going to talk about a beautiful love song. One of the most beautiful love songs of all time. So I needed someone good at singing and someone that I also love. So the special guest of today is... <laughs> my wife. Now, joke aside, we're gonna play this beautiful song in many different ways. So, you know, the goal is to really show you how to play I Can't Help Falling In Love using the ukulele. And of course, who are you? I'm cool. not a singer, first of all. <laughs> My beautiful wife. My name is Maria. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I'm excited. Perfect. He just kind of dragged but me into But you're good this. at singing, though. Thank you. And by the way, I'm using a tenor ukulele, so I'm tuned in uh, high G. I have high G, C, E, and A. Of course, you know, like, there are different levels. For example, we can start with the most simple thing to do. For example, you can play a chord every time you need it. Yeah. So you don't have to start with a lot of strumming or with the finger picking technique. You can literally just play a chord every time there's a chord change. For example. Wise man say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. So it's a little high, right? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> But you see, like, you can literally play just one chord. And so if you're a beginner, this is probably the best way because it sounds simple. If you want to add more color, there is a way to still keep it that simple. But for example, you can add an additional note to these basic chords. For example, one of the things that I like to do a lot is to keep one note, for example, on the first string. In this case, we're going to keep the, uh, the fret number three on the first string. And so for every chord that we play, we're gonna keep the same, so. It sounds nice. We are still just strumming one chord. Do you wanna try with this? Yeah. It's nice. No, it sounds sweeter. What do you think? It adds a little bit more, I don't know, sweetness and more oomph into the song. Okay. Compared mm. to the first one that we did. What is the oomph? <laughs> you need sometimes the oomph in a song. So. Now, this is cool, but of course, like, there's no rhythm here. There's no beat. No. So, one thing that we can do, if you want to try, you can add a finger picking pattern to this, which doesn't mean that, you know, we have to play faster or slower. We can keep the same pace. At least now we have a nice steady tempo. Now, I think this song is in 6-8 or 3-4. It's basically uh, three beats. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think we took it a little bit too slow, but you know, you see like right now we have a steady tempo, a steady rhythm. And when you think about it, you know, once you figure out the, the beat, so you have one, two, three, one, two, three. You can also strum uh, if you need more rhythm and you don't want to do the finger picking thing. You could do three strums. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Only fools rush in. 
Now, of course, you don't necessarily have to strum, you know, with all these downstrokes all the time. Once you get the basic rhythm, you can then strum even more. Now, we don't have to do the whole song all the time, <laughs> but for example, we could do it like... So we have one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. like you have more rhythm and so I can support your singing even more mm. which one do you prefer so far I always like rhythm so the strum it depends on the mood I guess as well because the thing is if you strum like just three times yeah. it sounds a little bit too heavy I think. and too slow like there's a rhythm but it's kind of slow kind of drags so with this up stroke I think you can really add that kind of different rhythmic thing that is really cool down down up down up down down up down up down yeah it's nice i like it a lot and so with the finger picking technique you can you don't necessarily have to always just do a simple arpeggio right so this is very sweet i like it a lot but uh, you can add more rhythm with the thumb slap technique for example You want to give it a try? So you have something different here, no? Look, like, yeah. how does it feel when you sing it? It feels, it's, it's a love song, but it feels more of kind of like a happy love song. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the arpeggio, yeah. when I was blocking it. It was a love song, but it was more of like a slow and I don't know how you can explain. More mellow. Me more mellow, exactly. Whereas the one that you just played, it's more of like a happy love song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a nice technique. It's not the easiest thing to do. And I'm also adding this hammer on. Maybe we can have a lesson with all these techniques. That would be cool. So this is definitely not necessary. I mean, if you play such a song, you don't necessarily have to come up with, you know, such a different chord progression. And I know that it feels like for a singer could be challenging to play over these chords especially they sound so tiny with the tenor ukulele maybe with the baritone mm -hmm. like how does it feel do you feel like you have enough support when you sing oh it's like i don't know it just kind of you know clashes with my singing for me as a non-singer it was a little bit too high yeah and i think that I, yeah like what you said i didn't get much support from you know so you prefer like these chords in first yeah, position? Exactly. I just kind of felt like alone, <laughs> alone mm. in a way where I could just hear a little bit of background of the ukulele um, playing with a high note. Well, that's interesting though, because, you know, I think that it's true that your instrument should always serve a purpose. And so it doesn't really matter how many you know, beautiful chords, you know, or beautiful chords you play, you have to make sure that they serve the song. Mm. So I really think that in this case, maybe the strumming is probably better or the yeah. finger picking uh, if you keep it simple. So nice chords, but maybe not necessary, you know, in this example. Of course, guys, we were so excited about this video that we completely forgot about the second section of the song. So of course, it goes without saying that you can use the same techniques that you just learned to play the second section of the song, the B section. Let me show you the chords real quick. So we're coming from the last chord, the F major. We do it three times, then E7, and then A minor. E7, A minor, and E7, 
A1 and E7, A minor, D7, G minor 7, and C major. I will go back to the A section. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep watching, keep learning, and enjoy this video. So we're really curious to know which one did you prefer, right? Which is the best way for you and maybe, you know, like which one would you like to play along with this song? Let us know in the comment section down below. Well, that's all for today. Have a nice rest of the uh, week and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.